Hello, this is Clop321, and this is PHP and MySQL Tutorial 13, and this is posting on a blog. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to extend on this blog system that we've made, um, Tutorial 10, 11, and 12, and we're going to make a way to actually put on posts. Now, we have a way to log in, so I might as well just do that now. Um, I don't know if this is the correct password. No, it's not. Okay, um, and what we need to do here is create a way for us to post. So, first of all, I created a uh, post page um, called put.php. Now, I pretty much just based it on the rest of the uh, pages. There's nothing really special here yet. I only added one individual thing that might be different, and that's a uh, divider with a class called postform, which we can later style up with CSS. But I'm not going to go over that in this tutorial. So first, uh, we have to do three major steps. We have the initiation, we have the setup, and the detection. And then we have the final step, which is the database. We have the communication, and the finalization. So um, essentially, we need to initiate a way for us to have the ability to post. So that's this file right here. That's what its purpose is. And in this post, I'm not going to put in the what you see is what you get. In other words, the visual editor. I'm going to do that in a future tutorial on how to implement other plugins into your current works. So uh, we have the post form, and we might as well um, go in and put the HTML in for that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause and then do that real quick. Okay, so now I have the form in, and really all it has is the title and the main content and a send button. Um, and what's special here about this is that it's not. It's just a form. But what we have to do with that is um, process the data. So now we have uh, figured out how to start up our page here, but the next step is actually also getting the uh, SQL that we require. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, PHPMyAdmin, admin, go to the database here for the blog, and go to my posts. So if I just go and I, let's just say export I'm not going to save another file. I'm just going to click on this, and I'm going to get the uh, the stuff I need here to put into um, my uh, SQL for posting. So I'm going to say that my SQL here equals this, and right here we can just say Unix underscore timestamp. And it should work. Um, that is a function which puts in the timestamp. Or if we want to be really, really safe, we can just go ahead and put in time, which is the same thing. So we have the uh, post content here. And we have the post title here. And the last two values we need to make sure that are correct. Um, and sorry for going in reverse here, but that's just how I do things. Um, is that for the ID, since it's auto increment, we can depend on putting in null, and it will automatically put in a number for us. But our username is also something we need to put in that is correct. So, what we can do here is if you recall correctly, in my login page, I have a part where it says the user ID. And that is saved in the session. That's something that the user cannot touch, only the server can. So I'm going to paste this in here, and now I should have a good SQL to execute. Um, I just need to actually put in the content there and the content there. So the next thing to tell is if we're actually receiving data. Now I'm just going to put in my um, hidden data right here to my input. So I'm going to say type equals hidden name equals, uh, I'm going to say sub, like I usually do to be consistent in my value is uh, one 
and that is the end of that. So now I just need to detect if I am getting one uh, for my sub value. Now I'm using post, so I can use the uh, dollar sign underscore request or post. In this case, I'm going to use um, post. So I'm going to say if is set because we don't really care about the value; we just care that it is set. Um, I'm going to say dollar sign underscore post, and I'm going to put in uh, sub. So now inside of this code block here that is currently residing in line four, I um, I know that this is where I should have um, the ability to process my form. So I'm going to paste this in here real quick. And okay, so we have two major things we need to grab. We have the uh, the post form content, and we have the post form title. Now I'm highlighting the ID because I just use that to identif identify it. Um, and now I'm, I'm just going to replace this part with content here. And so we're going to be pulling our data from post content and post title. So I'm going to say title equals trim dollar sign underscore post. Um, I'm going to say title. Now, one thing I probably should mention is that when you're sending variables through post and get or request in the um, in another case, you need to strip the backslashes because it has to um, it has to escape the values to make sure it sends valid data that does not mess with the rest of the HTTP headers. So I'm going to say strip uh, slashes, and I'm going to do that. So now we should be good on the title, and now I just need to do that the same thing on my content. So I'm going to replace this with content, and put content in here. So now we have the title and we have the content. Now. There are a few things first that I'm going to point out here is that I need to further manipulate these values so that they are valid for uh, this query so they don't mess up. So I need to do the uh, MySQL escape stuff. So that's what I'm going to do next. I am going to um, escape content. So I'm going to say, but first one thing I'm going to do is do the validation part. Um, with the setup. So I'm going to say, well, I'm going to set up a value for saying, do we have an error? So I'm going to say error equals false for now. And I'm going to say, if um, strlen of uh, the title at this point, it should be trimmed, and if they just put spaces or tabs or whatever, um, it will be blanked out. And I, I want a title that's longer than. Um, three characters. So I'm going to say if it's less than three characters then it's bad. So I'm going to say error equals um, true and I'm going to say reason equals um, bad title. And I am going to just put in a backslash in there, put a dot there, and I am also going to put in my reason um, with a default variable here. Oops. Okay. So now I have uh, just tested if my content for the title is true or, well, suitable. And I can base that for my content. So I can just go here, put in content, and put in bad um, post content. So now I have um, reasons and errors and all that good stuff. So I might as well just, after the form, put in a div section um, that is for errors. And I'm not going to bother with the CSS, uh, making it highlighted red for right now. But if I do have an error, I'm going to put the reasons down there. So now I'm going to say if um, if not dollar sign um, error. What I'm saying here is if I do not have an error, because error only is true when, if it uh, fulfills either of these two um, tests here. So if I do not have an error, then do the following. 
So I'm going to cut this uh, SQL into there. And I'm going to put an else statement here. And um, at this point, this pretty much means, okay, um, if I have anything to do uh, for preparing the error statement, do it here. But I don't have anything to do with that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in my PHP here and say, if um, is set dollar sign reason, because I don't want to, because um, I'm being strict here and I'm only putting out variables that actually exist. So I'm going to say echo dollar sign reason, and that's it. So now, and by the way, reason should only have content inside of it if an error has occurred. I mean, it is defined up here, but we should only be seeing this page again if we do have an error. So that. Um,